Welcome to another Farm Your Yard episode. I'm your host, Carrie, and thanks for joining us today. So preventing pest damage on your crops is really important to grow nice, healthy crops that feed you and your family. And at the Columbia Center for Urban Agriculture, we have a tiered approach to managing insect pest damage on our plants. The first line of defense is always to grow a super healthy, nutrient dense vegetable plant. Our second tier is to cover it with netting or row cover to physically protect that crop from moths, birds, beetles, true bugs. But sometimes, even with those first two lines of defenses, a moth gets in or a beetle breaches our insect netting and gets in and starts to eat our crops. And so that's when we bring out our third line of defense. In the case of caterpillars, we use something called BT, Bacillus thuringiensis. And that's what we're gonna talk about in today's episode, so stay tuned. Bacillus thuringiensis, also known as BT, is a naturally occurring soil microbe. And this soil microbe creates a toxic protein that kills the larval stage of lots of insect species, like the larval stages of some flies, some mosquitoes, and the larval stages of like some moths and butterflies, also known as caterpillars. And you can get different strains of BT to target those particular insect larval stages. Now at CCUA and here in my own garden, we predominantly use the type of BT strain that is for caterpillars because that is one of our major pests. So this type of BT is commercially av available in a few forms. And I have a couple right here with me. So we have this form, which you can pick up at any gardening center or probably hardware store in town. And it's a dust, it's a white powder that you sprinkle as a dry medium over your crops that are affected by caterpillar damage. Also available is this liquid concentrate version, which I personally prefer in my own garden. And you just put a few teaspoons per gallon and spray it over you know, your plants. And that's the, that's the method I use. At the agriculture park and the veterans urban farm, we use a third option, which are some granules that we suspend in water and put in backpack sprays and spray. So there's a lot of easily available uh, forms this one being my preferred form for backyard gardener. Because BT is a living organism, you wanna make sure to purchase uh, the whatever type of BT you use uh, that is volume appropriate for your garden. If you sit on it for 10 years, it might become less effective over the course of time. What do we use BT on? Well, there are a couple major caterpillar pests of some of our important crops that we grow, both at our locations at the Columbia Center for Urban Agriculture and that are important crops in most backyard gardens. So two caterpillars that we uh, try to keep away from our crops are cabbage loopers and cabbage worms. And those are major pests of the brassica family. And so they eat our kale and our collards. I have a little garden helper behind me. Tomatoes also get a particular caterpillar pest called a tomato hornworm. Sometimes it's also called the tobacco hornworm, depending on the specific one you have in your garden. But uh, usually we are able to keep those at bay by hand picking or just monitoring the plants. Hi Garfield. Another type of caterpillar that we sometimes get in the fall that predates on a lot of our crops is called the fall armyworm. And it is a little caterpillar that doesn't look like it would do a lot of damage, but like the name suggests, it comes in a horde uh, like an army and they will just eat and eat and eat. And so we also use BT on the fall armyworm. <laughs> Sorry. BT is a natural and certified organic spray for your garden. But even so, it's really important to only apply it when you know that you need to bring out your third string of defense. So how do you know when you need to use it? So if you've ever watched this series of videos, you probably know what I'm about to say. And that is, 
Any good gardener knows the key to good gardening is just observation, just constant observation. So that's how you monitor the pest damage in your garden is by what we call scouting. And scouting means you walk around your garden in particular looking for insect damage on your plants and you're scouting to look for these insects that are damaging your plants. What do you look for when you scout? Well, you look for holes in your plants from leaf chewers, such as caterpillars. You look for frass, which is the really polite way of talking about insect poop. Um, or you look for yellowing or any sort of like general malaise of your plants. When we're talking about caterpillar damage, we're looking for holes on the leaves of our plants. And because caterpillars eat so much, there's also gonna be a lot of frass, a lot of poop hanging around on those leaves too. So that's what you'll look for. So plants can take about 20% damage to their body, like their leaves, before their like hardiness is affected negatively. So they can withstand about a fifth of each leaf being eaten before, you know, like their quality of growth goes down a little bit. So that is my rule of thumb when I scout for insect damage and caterpillar damage on my brassica crops in my garden. I wait until it looks like about a fifth of the plant is damaged and that is when I bring out my third string, which is the BT spray. It's important to scout daily or at least every other day in your garden because caterpillars eat a lot. So they don't have an exoskeleton like other insects life stages. And so that means they're not like restrained in the amount that they can eat. They can just gorge themselves 100% of the time because nothing is like constricting them. And I bring all that up because like once caterpillars start eating your crops, they can like really do some damage quickly. So you want to be monitoring and ready to use the BT if you need to. So I've looked at these crops and they look pretty happy and healthy. These are two different types of kale that I've got growing in my garden. Um, they are newly transplanted, so they're still getting their footing. And after I transplanted them, I put my insect netting over it, which we go over in a different video. So I don't actually have any caterpillar damage on my kale quite yet. I probably will start seeing some damage on them later in the summer, so I have my BT ready. Let's say I did see at least 20% of damage on my kale plants, what would I do? Well, the BT I have at my house is the liquid concentrate, which the dilution ratio for a 16 ounce spray bottle like this is a half of a teaspoon. So I put half a teaspoon of that BT concentrate in here, kind of shook it up, put some water in, and now I'm gonna spray it on my plants. And the nice thing about this insect netting is that you can spray right through it. You don't even have to take it off. So I'm just going to spray right through it. And the important thing is to spray the plant until it starts to drip off of the plant. And that's like the secret sauce, like spray until it drips and then you're done and you can move to the next plant. So I'm going to spray it until I see some dripping and then, and I'm done. So obviously these are really small plants. The larger the plant, the more spraying that you'll have to do. But spray it until it drips off and then you can move to the next crop. So after you apply BT the first time, it's really important to monitor the damage on your plants. So BT kills caterpillars uh, in the course of one to a few days. Um, but because there's always moths out here fluttering around and laying their eggs, there's a new you know, life cycle happening continuously over the gardening season. So at the agriculture park and at the Veterans Urban Farm, we find that we usually start applying it almost every week and the peak of the summertime when the caterpillar pressure on our collard greens and kale is the worst, even with our insect netting. So you might be asking yourself, how does BT work? Well, BT is like super, interesting to me and maybe to you i feel like the more you understand about like how insects battle each other it's like why even care about what sci-fi stories are out there because it's crazy the toxin that bt produces when ingested by caterpillars disintegrates the digestive tract of the caterpillar and so the caterpillar ends up dying due to starvation and also infection because its, di its digestive tract is like melting inside of its body. So BT doesn't mess around, it's intense. 
BT is a great third string option. It is very effective at keeping your caterpillar pest population at bay. But even so, as you've learned in other videos, it's really important to preserve some insect pest populations. So we always recommend start out by growing really healthy, happy vegetables. Second string, cover it with a physical barrier so that the moths can't flutter and lay their eggs directly on your plants right away. And only then, after scouting and observing that even after all of that, still more than 20% of your plant is damaged by caterpillar predation, then pull out your BT and start spraying it. If you are a new gardener and are having a difficult time identifying what pests are predating on your crops, you don't know how to identify pests by the damage they do, get this book. Garden Insects of North America, The Ultimate Guide to Backyard Bugs by Whitney Cranshaw. And in the description below, there's a link to where you can find this book online. You won't regret it. It is the greatest coffee table book for insect identification in North America with like a gardening lens. It is fabulous. I've had this book for 10 years and I still read it. As always, we hope that this was helpful in your gardening journey and stay tuned for other gardening content. Also check out below where we link other videos that support this video, like all about using insect netting. Until next time, see you later. He found the catnip. That's catnip. I was going to say.